Okay. Next thing we can do, Mike, is go ahead and quarter this thing. Now, since we uh, not going to keep the front legs below the joints, we'll go ahead and take them off first. And you can take them off with a knife or with a saw. Either one, you can cut them right at the joint and then just snap them down. And then just cut them off with a knife. Or you can take them off with a saw, either way. And generally when I quarter a deer, I start by taking its shoulders off, then take out the back straps mm -hmm. and the inside tenderloins. And take shoulders off, all you do is just cut right next to the rib cage, staying behind the shoulder blade. And you got one full quarter. All right. And then you do the same thing if you'll hold him there. Sure. Do the same thing on this side. Staying right along the rib cage. And that's got the front quarters. The next thing I do is take the back straps out. So if you'll hold him so they stay still. What I used to do is just cut right down the backbone. Staying as close as you can so you don't lose any meat. Just work your knife along the backbone and cut the tender or the back strap off right below the junction with a ham. And then as you work that meat back with your knife blade, the same thing as ribeye steaks on a cow. Once you get it started, it will peel out of there. and turn loose from the ligament holding it in there, membrane. Hold on a second. thing separated from this membrane so it'll come on out. Now then, should peel out of there. And the back strap runs all the way down to right at the base of the neck. go. It's a good looking piece, piece of, of meat. solid meat. And we didn't even leave too much on the carcass. Mm -mm. Do the same thing on the other side. Right down next to the bone. And then in front of the ham again. For right-handed people, this is probably the hardest one to get out because it's backwards. But once you get it peeled away from the backbone like the other side, you 
get it started down. Got to hold this knife a second. Sure. This membrane is usually what holds it in place. It makes it a little more difficult to get out to remove that membrane. Peel it back. And then it comes out pretty easy. And there's another one. Some of the best cuts on the deer. Next thing we want to get out before we go any further, and that's the inside tenderloins. And I usually trim this flank meat down. Tenderloins lay right in against the backbone on the inside. And you take them out basically the same way that you take out a back strap. You just cut it next to the backbone, staying in close so you don't lose any meat. And they just peel out like that. Once you get them cleaned up, Do the same thing on the other side. Just keeping it close to the backbone. There's the other one. You want to save the rib cage <clears throat> in the neck because you can take this and use it for sausage meat, or you can just cut these ribs in half and put them on a barbecue pit, just cut them off along the backbone and barbecue them, then cut the neck off and make a roast out of it or boil it down. The next thing we want to do is get ready to take the hams off of it. To do that, we'll take the backbone off right here. And we'll do that with a saw. And then we're left with two hams. And what I normally do is just split them right down the middle of the backbone. And you can take and cut them off with a knife, but it's a lot easier just go ahead and split the, the hams right down the middle. Now then, Set that down. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use it. Okay. Now what we can do is go ahead and take one of them off the gamble. Go ahead. That should hang there. Yeah. Then we'll take the bottom part of the leg off. And again, you can do that with a knife or a saw. I normally use a knife. You can cut it right there at the joint. Be sure and put your knife down on this and just pop down on it. And then you can finish cutting it off. And there's one hand. And then we'll go ahead and take this other one down, Mike. And if you don't want to use a knife, you can just take a saw and cut this thing off just below the joint. 
That makes a clean cut. One thing we want to do, we want to make sure that the meat stays in good condition, so we're going to bag it up, put it in an ice chest, and keep it cool while it's being transported. So if you want to pick those hands up and put them in here, and another reason that we bag it and put it in an ice chest to transport is there's no sense of fending people that don't hunt by carrying a deer strapped across the hood or hanging out of the back end of a pickup truck. And it's not good on the meat to begin with, so we'll bag these up, put them in an ice chest. And then we'll put the shoulders and the back straps and the tenderloin in another bag. Okay. Let's see if the back straps will go in there. Get the okay. That in there. One thing that you can do with a rib cage, if you want to, you can take and trim a rib cage out to use for sausage meat, and you just cut flat along the ribs. Trying to get all the meat off of it. And you can put the trimmings in a bag. And you can trim out the neck the same way. And on the rib cage, you want to be sure and cut down between the ribs and get the meat that's sectioned in between. There's not a lot there, but it'll all make sausage. And you can trim all the ribs out like that. Or like I said before, you can just take and cut them in half, cut them off the backbone, and put them on a barbecue pit. But you don't want to waste any of the meat on the rib cage because there's good sausage making in there. Next thing I want to do is roll up the hide. If you're going to have a deer mounted, you want to keep the cape in good shape. So you need to roll it up and uh, put it in a bag and tie the bag off tightly around the base of the antlers so that the cape doesn't ruin uh, in transport. And also, there's no need to transport the hide and the head visible in the back of a truck so that it's not offensive to some folks. You can go ahead and bag that and tie it off. If it were a trophy, you would take this bag and tie it tightly right around the base of the antlers so that air couldn't get into the bag. But since this is not a trophy deer, we're just going to go ahead and cover the horns and all when we transport it down the highway. And that's all there is to it. We're ready to roll. All right. Take this thing over to the pickup.